uh, Professor Aurora joined VML Munjal University as the Vice Chancellor about one and a half years ago, and he is now defining the future of our university. So this is where the topic of the future of computing becomes so important for us. Uh, now I would like to introduce our guest, Mr. Kundan Kumar uh, Lal, who has 30 plus years of IT related senior leadership experience in building businesses, handling aggressive corporate and client leadership roles, and solidifying profitable executive level relationships at Fortune 500 companies. Milal is recognized for the capacity to delineate and articulate corporate vision and then galvanize teams to embrace it. He drives himself and his team hard, managing with honesty, integrity and respect while building unparalleled team loyalty. Currently, Mr. Lal evangelizes accelerated growth of artificial intelligence research and implementation in India. Uh, he heads Adviti and Viti Research Foundation, which is a Section 8 non-profit organization delivering AI and emerging technology-based projects, products, and training. So it is in this context about artificial intelligence uh, for actually people like us who only think of AI as letters of the alphabet. So today's discussion becomes very important for us also to understand all about the future of computing that is artificial intelligence. Uh, so I would now like to invite our Vice Chancellor, Prof. Manoj Arora, to kindly initiate the session. Please, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Nandita. Uh, first of all, I must say that we all are going through a very, very difficult phase due to COVID pandemic, which has impacted the whole world in one way or the other. Uh, the world has become a standstill. Uncertainties loom, but I'm sure that the intelligent human sapiens uh, have always fought and will fight again to come out of this phase victorious, as well as fight the invisible enemy. I hope that you and your families are safe and healthy and above all, keeping high spirits and remaining positive. Uh, this brief pause to our lives has given us many good things. We are rethinking, we are rejuvenating, we are relearning and we are reimagining the future. You all know we are living in Industry 4.0 era where we are t talking of artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, data analytics, cloud computing, IoT, 5G, automation and robotics, 3D printing, health technology, digital transformations, digital economy, education technology, and whatnot. Every day, in fact, we are generating huge amount of data through numerous devices. Almost all of us are either on Facebook or on Instagram or on WhatsApp or on LinkedIn. We ourselves are generating huge data. If the mankind would not have invented artificial intelligence and machine learning, perhaps we would have been a completely disorganized and unstructured world today. These technologies have intruded in every part of our life, so much so that we will not be able to breathe without these tools in years to come. The recent example is online learning and assessment. Artificial intelligence and machine learning have helped all the educational technology companies to take the learning to people's doorsteps in their comfort environment at the pace they want to learn at any time they want to learn, and at any time they want to get evaluated. And I can go and on and on. In fact, learning has become personalized learning, all due to the tools of artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analytics, and cloud computing. The usage is going to increase many folds, I'm sure. As I said, it will become our lifeline. Now it is up to us whether we want to use it or abuse it, since there is another side of it as well. We are a young, innovative, but upcoming university. We shifted to online learning and assessments very swiftly during this COVID period and have completed all our academic activities. We will integrate online learning into our regular academic delivery as the younger generation is very agile and adaptive to work on devices, to work on apps, and on emerging software learning tools. I'm happy to share that we have introduced artificial data sciences, IoT, automation, robotics, cybersecurity, data analytics, digital marketing, business analytics into all our UG and PG programs, be it BBA, BBA LLB, BLLB, MBA, and BTEC. 
we have created a cross disciplinary culture where students have huge flexibility in choosing courses from one specialization to another as major minor or otherwise any kinds of electives our curricula consists of more than 50% of experiential learning and hands on learning and is very dynamic we change the content in real time we have completed 6 years of our existence i am proud to say that yesterday in nirf 2020 ranking announced by government of india our school of management has been adjusted 37th overall in the management category in the country we are amongst the top 10 private management schools in the country we applied for the first time this year under this category our third batch of btech programs will graduate in 2020 and therefore we will become eligible to apply in this engineering category also in 2021 we have the right ingredients be it infrastructure be it faculty be it teaching and learning processes be it pedagogy be it research and development or be it innovation and entrepreneurship we are not compromising on quality and you will find us on the top of the world one day i'm sure with our partners and academic mentors like imperial college london university of warwick foreign of our institutes microsoft ibm kpmg siemens shell and of course viti research foundation we are confident that we shall be able to traverse intelligently and smoothly we have a bright bright future no doubt now i will request mr kundana to show us the future of computing artificial intelligence data analytics and machine learning in fact we both started using machine learning in late 1980s and early 1990s so we are prolific users of these technologies Mr Kundra Lal leads a group called Viti Foundation which dreams eats chews and practices artificial intelligence 24/7 he will show us the future of computing he also happens to be our adjunct faculty and is guiding our university to adopt and adapt new generation of technologies but before he starts some logistics i will be the moderator of this session the it department has kept your devices on mute shri kundana now we'll make a presentation after this we will have a question and answer session you can key in your questions queries under q and a section some questions i will read if required i may ask the it team to unmute the person who wants to pose his or her question live over to you kundana thank you sir and uh, good evening to all uh, i hope you are able to listen me sir i mean voice is coming over yes yes please go ahead thank you sir so uh, let me um, and, and thanks for the introduction sir and uh, uh, before i start uh, let me give a little brief about uh, me uh, in because i heard the wordings which the miss um, uh, ma'am nandita ma'am came out with uh, i am an it guy uh, basically and all my career i have been in it uh, companies uh, delivering it applications and products uh, globally and that is what i have been doing but one intervention which uh, you aptly pointed out uh, that uh, when we started our career i did my masters in um, ai uh, from vidy mestra and uh, that is how the interest has been into uh, the ai space and when i looked um, in, in in 2017 or that the winter of ai is over and uh, and there had been um, a few reasons i'll i'll deliberate upon those reasons uh then we started this organization uh, with the research foundation and we also started on organization known as ativiti so aviti uh, is a sanskrit word uh, it means intelligence and uh, when you add ati to it it becomes super intelligence and let me tell you uh, the countries and the corporations and mncs who are investing heavily into ai at this point of time um and enterprises uh, they are all trying to achieve artificial super intelligence so that's the goal so let me go to the uh, the slides if you look on my uh, slide the slide which is uh, uh, visible to you all you see we human homo sapiens i mean the humans we are there we are the most dominant species at this point of time and um, and, and we are not only uh, ruling the world but we are destroying the world earth uh, with all our inventions and technologies uh, which we have currently right but there is a guy coming up at the background very fast and uh, this gentleman who is coming up uh, we call him asi artificial super intelligence okay and we should be very very cognizant of this guy okay so uh, let me go to the second slide of mine and uh, why we should be 
right. Hold on. So if you look at, uh, I hope I, I was able to shift to my second slide. Yes, please go on. Okay, wonderful, sir. Wonderful. So if you can, uh, if you look at this particular slide, uh, uh, you will see that uh, they, uh, the, when artificial super intelligence will be there, we will be on the left hand side of the screen. Okay. Uh, this is the prediction. And, if, and, and this is not me. Uh, these are some of the gentlemen, if you look down below on my slide, uh, you know this, the right hand corner guy, Elon Musk right? He heads the SpaceX, uh, Tesla, Solar City, and all. And this gentleman came out and said recently that we are summoning the demon. Okay, that was a statement. Uh, so when demon comes, so rakshas jab aata hai, to kya karta hai? Hame kha jata hai. This is what demon does. So this is what he means when he says we are summoning the demon. Uh, if you, on the left-hand corner, upper side, you see this guy, gentleman, he is no more, is a very famous astrophysicist uh, known as Stephen Hawking. Uh, he said that development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. And uh, so, so they are very, very unequivocal in what they are trying to connect to. And uh, there is a book known as Super Intelligence. You can actually go and buy it on Amazon. Um, and the wonderful book, actually, and I would recommend that you guys study when you get time to it. Uh, he said that a, a Disneyland without children. So the world will have a lot of collaterals, okay, a lot of technology. It will be a wonderful world. But then uh, we children will be not there. It will be a Disneyland, but we children will be not there. This is what Nick Bostrom says. James Barat, he came out and said, whatever we wanted to do on this earth, we have done it. AI is our final invention, artificial intelligence and the end of human era. This is what James Barrard, and he has written a book known as Our Final Invention. But I believe that Werner Winge is probably somewhere between, and he depends, looks at the human resilience more. Uh, like the physical extinction of the human race is one possibility, and this is what I believe in more. And, um, and I look at some of the gentlemen recently also, like uh, Microsoft um, guy, Bill Gates. He came out and he said, why can't we understand it? So these gentlemen are very, very unequivocal, very serious people, uh, scientists, business people. They are trying to warn us that artificial intelligence could bring the apocalypse. Okay. So let's try to understand why they are uh, trying to uh, say that uh, to us. Okay. So uh, if you look at uh, this particular set, uh, the, see, if you, if, you, if you try to understand it, the era which we have entered into at this point of time, okay, this era is of hyper automation. And AI is going to fuel this hyper automation. Okay, this is how the Gartner also is pointing us to out. And this is, and this is already happening uh, specifically into every enterprise. I come from IT uh, sector. So a lot of automated process. We are leveraging uh, DevOps for delivering our uh, software from production, uh, from development environment to production environment, and uh, using a lot of robotic process automation tool sets for doing it. Okay, so RPA, DevOps, these kind of automation is already there, which is taking away some of the needs for our delivery managers, uh, the project managers. Even tomorrow, with uh, the coders and testers, jobs will be gone. Okay. So advanced analytics, increased team collaboration, this is uh, or greater productivity and greater compliance. And this is not only true for enterprises or companies. This is also true for academic institutions, uh, universities, schools, everywhere. This is going to be an hyper automation era. And we need to be uh, so much aware of this, uh, that this era is uh, coming in uh, very fast for us. Uh, let me... Uh, uh, Right. So, uh, I'm still uh, visible, I hope, sir. Right. Yes, yes, you are. Please continue. Right, right, sir. I, I'll need uh, some verbal um, uh, feedback. <laughs> In online mode, uh, you don't get that, the visual feedback. Right. So, I was talking about the hyper automation. And if you look at that, when I say the hyper competitive distillate price, how it will be different. 
The difference will be that from programming, what we do today, or the linear algorithms which we write, or linear coding which we do, we humans have been written, and we have written around 8 billion lines of code at this point of time. This is slowly moving towards training, and that will become more apparent as the AI and ML, AI becomes more and more prominent and more matured, it will be data and training. Okay, it will be no more programming. That is one aspect. The Moore's law is getting disrupted. Okay, we are already at the productivity on, 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 on the scaling of uh, semiconductors. We are at the end of the line. Okay, I uh, was reading about this um, uh, ultraviolet lithography, which has now reached to the level of um, uh, 65 nanometers. Uh, Okay, so it has gone down to that level and probably we cannot go beyond it. So new technology set like uh, neuromorphic chips or uh, your quantum computing or photonics, these are going to define the tomorrows uh, or, or disrupt the Moore's law, which has been true till date, uh, not to the next level. And I hope you guys know about the Moore's law. It has only told us that every two years, our uh, devices which we use become half miniaturized, more miniaturized, more is smaller and becomes twice faster, more powerful, twice far more powerful. Okay, that was the Moore's law. And it has been true for last 120 years of this semiconductor era. So that is going to get disrupted. And I will delve a little deeper on that, why I'm saying it and what it means for us. Okay, so data lakes or a structured data set which we have today, uh, that should become pervasive. So data will be everywhere. Data is going to be the king. It is going to be the water. It is going to be the fire. It is going to be everything for us. And it is already there. We realize it or we don't realize it. All of us, we are generating humongous amount of data sets. Okay, our everything about our life is now available to every each one of us. Okay, that is the data about us. And uh, the, uh, it will become from imperative to declarative. All this if then logic which we are writing to become a goal orientation will come. It will become declarative. Systems will be given a goal and they will try to fulfill it. This is how the world will start changing. The memory, uh, when we started our, I, I remember my days in academia, and when I was doing my master's, I was using a machine which was a 386 machine with 256 KB RAM. And today, uh, we have got GBs now into it, right? Terabytes, we are using terabytes. Our hard disks have got uh, two terabytes of data sets. Okay, our machines, our laptops have got eight GB of RAM into it, built into it, right? So huge, and this abundance of uh, memory is going to go on increasing only. Okay, it will become abundant. It will become so cheap and abundant, we'll be not even able to realize it. Okay, and it will be persistent also. Data will be persistent. It will be kept. It will be always available to us. From hindsight, we will be moving towards and foresight. Okay, so it is not something that we will look at the things which has happened and then we will take a decision on top of it. We will be predicting it. That's the foresight. We'll start predicting things. Okay, and we are doing it increasingly. So look at the AI perspective. AI is now predicting your heart failure. And, I, I, uh, um, and, and some of these um, applications uh, are much more accurate than the human doctors. Actually, uh, the accuracy level of a human doctor is around 76.3%. When they look at your cholesterol, your um, other parameters, and predict that you may have a heart failure or cardiac arrest. But an AI based system, accuracy level has jumped to 86.7%. The much more high, higher AI is predicting it. Okay? From general purpose uh, systems, we'll move towards a built for purpose system because we will be training it, uh, we'll be analyzing the data, clarifying it, cleansing, clustering it, and then training the algorithms for doing a very specialized job. And that will be for the purpose. So that is how the world will be from central authority to become more distributed. Blockchain and all will be driving this a more distributed world. And I believe a more distributed technology set is also just. Okay, so from central authority based platforms, we'll be moving to a distributed platform day in and day out. So a lot of P2P softwares are already very successful and we'll see more and more of these peer-to-peer -peer softwares coming into picture and gaining the ground. From proprietary, we'll be more towards programming our open systems, okay? And data burden will become an opportunity. So today, uh, we are struggling with data acquisition. We are struggling to analyze data. We are struggling to make sense out of data, okay? But that is the opportunity, and that is becoming the opportunity for the coming hyper-competitive digital enterprise. And when I use the word enterprise, uh, mind it, it is not companies I'm talking about. I'm talking about 
the enterprises, be it a non, uh, non, uh, non-profit uh, foundations or be it a university, uh, be it a company or be it an academic institution or so schools, everything, every organization, every enterprise or government even, they will become hyper competitive. Or, okay. So if you don't have an AI strategy, you are going to die in a world that is coming. That is how uh, the eBay guy, the CEO, Devin Wang, uh, came out and said. So, uh, so let's de- let's go into a little deeper uh, into defining AI. So um, you you will hear into the if you word type a word on Google AI, you will hear or you will see a lot of words like uh, neural network. And by the way, you will hear too because Siri or your um, Alexa all are talking to you now. Okay, and they are also generating humongous data. Uh, for you when you are talking to them. So when you ask these qu- queries to them or you write type your queries on Google, you will find that a lot of words come to you, neural networks, planning, robotics, machine learning, ontology, natural language processing, NLP, perception, cognitive system. These are all AI, by the way. This is all relate to AI. But AI is a very generic word. And it's a pretty large word. Okay. We are living in a world which we call it artificial narrow intelligence. That's the world we are living in. And I'll come and try to tell you what AI and I is. But before I go there, let me try to explain that AI we can put into two categories. The one category of AI is where we humans are still making the final decision. And uh, the other category of AI is where we are not in the loop. We are not making the decision. AI is making the decision. Now, where we humans are still making decisions, there are two kinds of systems. One system is which is not learning. We have taught it, we have made it learn, and we have deployed it. After that, it doesn't learn anything. Okay? They are hardwired specific systems. And there are other kind of a system which is adoptive in nature. We have made it learn and we have put in two force. They are operating, but they are also adopting to the environment around. And these are kind of the systems which are going to become increasingly uh, more and more available. And they will be the, they'll be also become more and more aware. May not be um, uh, sentient, sentient still, but they'll become more aware of their surroundings. Okay, And they are the adoptive systems. And let me give you an example of um, uh, this hardware and specific systems and adoptive systems. And, and the hardware one we call the assistant intelligence. Let's take uh, that we, we take, take, uh, take a flight from Bombay uh, to New York. That's a 14 hour flight. Uh, when the flight goes up, uh, you will see the pilot generally after putting it in autopilot comes out and have coffee and chit chat with the uh, passengers into the flight, right? So uh, when it puts in the autopilot, autopilot are generally an assisted intelligence or hardwired systems. They are, have been trained to fly the plane into a simulated environment and they know a lot of conditions they can fly the plane. But let's assume a very unexpected scenario like a UFO comes in front of the plane. Then autopilot will not know how to handle it. Okay, So it will raise an alarm, pilot will rush back and handle the situation. Okay, He, he may uh, divert the flight, bring it down. What he does but he will avert the situation and then again he will put the autopilot and walks away right but this if this is a hardwired system it will not learn okay next time again a ufo comes it will again raise an alarm this is how it will operate but let's uh, uh, but boeing and all are working on adoptive systems too and these kind of autopilots okay they may have become already available okay and these kind of autopilots when they will raise an alarm pilot rushes back and handles the situation they'll be watching the pilot the human how he handles it Okay, and after that, when he again put on the autopilot and goes away, next time when this incident or this scenario occurs again, AI will not call the human. He will handle it. These are adoptive systems. This is the, what the adoptive systems are. So where we, let us go to the second side of the barricade, there are no humans in the loop. The automation in the industrial automation, they are hardwired, they are written by us. A lot of automotive factories, you go in, the whole, um, uh, the line is, has been automated. Um, the you will see robotic arms are putting screws, doors, uh, glasses on the vehicle, painting it up, and the final product is coming out uh, from the conveyor belt. Right, this is an automation, this is industrial automation, but by the way, this is all written by humans. We have written it, these are the linear algorithms. This is the linear which are the codes which we have written it to do it. But you go down below the autonomous intelligence, this is an AI application based on algorithm, okay, like neural networks and all. And these algorithms are self learning, they are adoptive in nature, they are learning. And one example um, I can give you is of the autonomous vehicles. So autonomous vehicles, you know, they are already uh, driving on um, uh, developed countries, streets like US and all companies like Google, Uber and all are uh, working on it. A lot of companies from truck to taxi, they are 
are putting autonomous vehicles. They are doing pizza delivery. They are ferrying you from one place to another place. They are, and, and recently, if you must have heard about it, that it killed a lady, a cyclist in US also. And there is a lot of footballa that um, the, on the ethical value system around autonomous vehicles of uh, that how what will happen. Okay, with autonomous skill, vehicle skills to us. And this is a very a big area of discussion in itself and a lot of learning and a lot of uh, uh, work is going on on our ethical value system of AI. So let's, uh, let me take you to the next slide. So the AI is all around you. And there are three reasons for when I say the AI is all around you. Three reasons why AI has come back or the winter of AI is, in, has been, is over now at this point of time. Uh, first is that Humongous computational capability is now available to us, and that too in an OPEX mode, not on CAPEX. But here, when we, whenever we used to develop an application and try to deploy it, we used to have our own data centers, and we used to put a lot of money that used to be pumped into it, crores of rupees used to be pumped into putting up these data centers. But as, as the technology evolved, uh, from mainframe to client server to enterprise or open systems or um, the HTML, the internet world, which we know of, and the cloud, the, the computational capability on the cloud has become an operational expenditure. It is no more a capital ex expenditure. You want to develop an application and deploy, how, how, how much it may be computationally intensive, you can just have to log into Microsoft Cloud or IBM Cloud or uh, Google or your um, um, Amazon Cloud. You just have to log in and put your system and deploy it and it will scale up fantastically. Be it 10 people or be it crores of people accessing your platform and application, it will scale up. That is what cloud brings in. So humongous computational capability is available. The second reason for AI to come in was your ubiquitous network. So when we started uh, our career, uh, we had this E, uh, the phones, which has only the voice capability and some SMS capability was there. I remember my days uh, in the uh, 90s when I got my first phone, it was an orange theme and a small device which I used to only talk about, right? But today phones is now thousand times more powerful than our phones in last 20 years, right? Uh, these devices have got, um, uh, you are doing a lot of things on that. You are accessing your Facebook or your other P2P applications, your Instagram, your uh, Twitter, everything you are doing it from them. And this, you are accessing this at a very fast speed or a much more faster speed, which is around 7, 7 to 21 megabits per second, uh, bytes per second. And that is uh, the 4G speed, right? And if you are aware uh, that 5G is also getting rolled out, guys, and with 5G from 4G technology said, the speed jump will be 450 times. We will be getting a GBPS coming to our mobile devices or whatever devices we'll be using in future with a GBPS over there. Okay, the fiber optics is already av available at one GBPS, but I'm talking about over the air, it will be one GBPS coming to you and it will change the world dramatically. A lot of immersive technologies will come in. Like the doctors will start operating a patient in Australia, from Delhi to Australia, right? Because the lag time will go away. A lot of immersive technologies like mixed reality, virtual reality will be there. You'll be not watching movie in two dimensions as we watch today on our TVs. We will be watching in three dimensions. Holograms will become a reality because they are very data crunching uh, implementations. Okay, they will become reality. So along with that, uh, the when I say the way uh, the AI is all around us, the third reason uh, for AI implementation coming is that we our world has increasingly become data, right? We are making applications either to the university for admissions or for our Aadhaar card or our banking transactions. We are everything we are doing online. And with COVID-19, we have started learning online too a lot, right? We have moved completely universities and schools have moved online completely. Uh, and, and you are well aware that uh, companies like Zoom, which we are talking upon, uh, this particular platform, they have suddenly, uh, from uh, 100 million, they have jumped to a billion dollar company, right? So we have become quite all. And this is not going to go away. This is going to continue. This path is going to continue. So the data is the third reason, or increasingly data set which is available, or digital world, is the third reason for AI to come in, okay? So now these three reasons where why the AI is changing our world, and you know, the way we travel, the way we do business, the way we shop, the way we do politics, the way we socialize, everything is going to be controlled by uh, AI or AI inputs will be there. You watch Netflix, 
you um, uh, in the recommendation engine in netflix is based on ai it knows what you are watching what you like to watch and make it available for you when you log in next time it knows which kind of a movie you like a horror movie or you like action adventure it will put that movies in front of you you are on youtube you are watching videos the, uh, the recommendation of engine of uh, youtube also is based on ai it knows about you a lot okay um, google even if you type half a word on google and not complete your search google knows what you are typing i was talking about uh, the model which amazon has but which is got shop and ship okay now they are leveraging ai to move towards ship and shop so they will predict what you need uh, today and uh, like a groceries or your uh, iphone or your uh, any other devices and you will open the door door in the morning and you will find out that uh, the box is there amazon box is available you will open it up on your things will be there you will amazed to see that you will take out the things which you require leave the box out amazon guy will uh, take away and they will bill you okay so this is how the world is uh, moving uh, very fast the human parity if you look at we have already reached uh, uh, like on by 2017 on object recognition ai has reached on 96% speech recognition 5.1% uh error rate is there which is actually better than human beings uh, we have got around 5.5% error rate so it is doing better than us uh by 2018 on machine reading and comprehension it has reached 38.493 on machine translation uh it has reached 70% in uh, 2017 right so uh, there are applications available like i trans i translate and all which is ai based which will which you can converse to a japanese guy even if you don't know japanese using this devices okay or this translation capability so the human parity uh, is quite near to us let me talk you about take you through uh, the the one the word you i use was artificial narrow intelligence the the world which we have today of the machine learning world we call it narrow intelligence because it does a certain task and they are doing much more better than human beings some of them like driving a car and all okay so this is the narrow intelligence but if you try to teach anything else this will be not able to pick it up or learn or it will forget the last task but a general intelligence which is an upcoming world and microsoft recently put a billion dollar uh, to a foundation uh, like open ai okay um, and and uh, to develop agi technologies artificial general intelligence now agi will be like us when i say agi it uh, so you learn a cycling or you learn swimming you don't forget across the life right even if you are old and you uh, cycle is given to you you will still able to do the driving that is how we are built it up we have got uh, that capability and this is general intelligence so the here the world is trying to develop the general intelligence from general intelligence to super intelligence is like a collective in way all the collective human intelligence till date the knowledge we have gained the books we have written if you put together into one that will be super intelligence okay the world is worried about one thing that if it is a soft landing we should not be worried about it but if it is a hard landing from agi to asi we should be worried about it okay and this agi technology if you look at uh, there are a lot of innovation triggers which are there machine learning world is already climbing the slope of enlightenment a lot of enterprise has adopted a lot of applications are already available like uh, it is cooking food for you uh, machine operators job translator pim driver autonomous vehicles all are there around you okay so i i uh, the innovation triggers for agi if you look at there are uh, one which i will specifically focus my energies upon is quantum computing this is a gartner hype cycle guys which gartner generally uses to uh, for, um, give us a foresight or predict about the technologies which are upcoming where they are into implementation behavior so look at the quantum computing part of it this is a innovation trigger and and why i should be uh, talking about uh, quantum but before i jump on the quantum computing let me tell you the industrial revolution 1.0 happened due to steam and we as an in india we were not party to that and it, it the result was we were uh, they were able to make railway engines steam ships machine guns and we were slaves for 200 years 2.0 which was based on electricity industrial revolution it happened uh it created the great divide the developed nations and underdeveloped countries we are still a developing nation it was based on the consumption of electricity okay how many factories you build it up 
we started catching up the world uh, with industrial revolution 3.0 uh, which was based on computing uh, we are exporting 287 billion dollar worth of it exports or services which we are providing uh, we have got 3.5 million people working into it industry at this point of time right the 4.0 which is happening is based on intelligence ai okay and if we are not party to this in this particular revolution probably this time we are going to be left tied permanently so let me go back to that quantum computing this is very important perspective i wanted to bring it forward but before that let me go back to the quantum computing part of it this innovation trigger why quantum computing uh, will uh, is a disruption which can provide ai or we call it quantum ai okay uh, you know our brain uh, that does around 26 quadrillion computations per second and it does at a speed of 120 meter per second whereas uh, a supercomputer like uh, Hunan one in China, it does around 32 quadrillion computation per second at a speed of light. But you know, the comparison ends there. We consume only 20 watts for doing 26 quadrillion computations per second. Whereas Hunan one consumes 24 megawatts. We, we, the, for doing 26 quadrillion computations per second, our brain occupies only the cranial, right? This copri. But Hunan one requires 724 square meter space. That is around seven two bedroom apartments. Okay, so technology is still not there where your human brain can be delved into a silicon, or we can map human brain directly into a computer. The capability is still not there. But if quantum computing, as it is coming in, and you must have read that Google has claimed the super Messi and a super Messi in quantum computing, right? Super Messi in what? Super Messi is in only terms of 72 qubits. Okay, a general purpose machine uh, of quantum computer will be a hundred million qubits which will be there available. Okay, more than a lakh qubits would be available to give it a general purpose feeling of it. Okay, so we are not there in quantum computing, but the world is walking towards the quantum computing much more. When a general purpose quantum computing or a quantum will be available, okay, to us, okay, not the today's IBM and uh, they are quite powerful machine. They are so powerful that uh, doing a calculation which probably a supercomputer will take 450 years, that calculation, algorithm calculation, it took only seven seconds to do it. Okay, that is the world uh, which quantum computers will bring in. And I will give you a very simple example. The laptop which I'm using currently to deliver this whole, app, uh, whole lecture, okay, if I get a quantum laptop tomorrow, it will be uh, 100 million times more powerful. Thus, crore laptop ko jod ke, jo laptop banega wo quantum laptop hoga. Okay, so 500 qubits is more powerful than the computer of world connected together. And we are talking about 100,000 qubits to bring in a general purpose quantum computing. It will change dramatically the AI world and it is already doing it. And that we call it a quantum AI, which will be much more powerful. It will exceed the human intelligence. Okay, so the quantum computer will bring in and, uh, 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 and this is what we are referring to. So you can well imagine Hunan one jumps to 100 million times or disrupts the Moore's law, uh, mapping the human brain uh, to uh, Silicon world will become a, uh, a possibility, right? At this point of time, we are uh, at level three in AI, okay? And already we are talking about the ethical world of AI. Like I gave you an example of autonomous vehicle. Imagine when autonomous vehicle, the ethical problem which people are discussing about it's uh, um, uh, that problem which is being uh, discussed or uh, uh, the cartoon problem uh, the problem is that if an uh, autonomous vehicle is driving okay and it uh, you are there are three people on the pedestrian on the left hand side and there is a wall on the right hand side and you are sitting inside and the humans if there, there is a failure into telematics what we do okay if the brake fails we'll hit the wall we'll not kill the pedestrian on the left hand side but what ai will do Okay, the current autonomous vehicle may kill the autonomous vehicle because humans are not humans for him at this point of time. They are just like an object. So there is a value system which needs to be built in. And that is a problem statement which world is grappling currently. And add, as the AI moves from level three to level five, okay, and becomes more matured, this will be uh, the biggest thing which will be there, which we have to grapple and put our policies. Governments have, governments have to think through and put uh, laws and policies around it, okay? On AI focus areas currently, the law of technologies which are being worked upon, like whole brain emulation, 
So we are moving from flops to sops. IBM has already announced and brain in a box by 2020. Okay. So from floating point operations, we started talking about uh, uh, synaptic operations per second or neuromorphic chips. Okay. We are talking about seed AI, just like human beings, it will take birth. Okay, and then it will develop the brain knowledge or um, uh, the knowledge set of it or reality which we are party to it over a period of time. But we take 21 years to become an adult, it take probably 21 months to become an adult. We'll be no more typing, we'll be not putting gestures, we'll be not talking to AI, we will be thinking and interacting with it. That is the BCI focus which is there currently. So a lot of uh, predictions on technological singularity, uh, it is inevitable guys at this point of time. Okay, and if you look at these, some of these timelines, they say um, high level machine intelligence or a humanoid which is as capable as will become available by 2050. But you know how technology works. The timelines can be crunched in or when the Moore's law is already getting disrupted. These timelines can come in very fast and we should be aware of it and become party to them. Why we should be aware of uh, or we should be afraid of ASI? Let me try to explain that in little. So Okay. So, Kundana, I know you have a lot of knowledge, a lot of stuff to share with our participants. We have to uh, control the time here also. So, if you can quickly move on to the career options or what the students ultimately would be looking for when they join any academic institution in the area in, and, and uh, work in the area of artificial intelligence, machine learning. Uh, could you please focus more on that now, uh, from now on? Right, sir. So I'll, I'll complete this up and I'll move to the, the job perspective uh, uh, quickly on that. Right, sir. So let me, uh, um, on the ASI front, uh, if you look at, we humans operate between 90 to 140 IQ levels. We are the most intelligent species. But if you go down below on intelligence staircase, on gorillas and chimpanzees are there. They operate between 30 to 40 IQ levels. You cannot explain algebra or trigonometric theorem to him, right? Chickens, which do have 15 to 20 IQ level, we eat day in and day in out. Uh, insects, which does have, we are learning a lot from them on some computing on AI front. Uh, they do have an IQ level of 5 to 10. They, they, uh, we, are, we have uh, announced a chemical warfare against them. So on the right hand side, if you come to, you will see the biological range of intelligence on this earth from humans to insects. That is it. But ASI, or AGI will be operating at 5,000 IQ level. Artificial super intelligence will be operating at 12,500 IQ level. We will have only two options, okay? Because the strategic thoughts, theorems, or uh, innovations which AI will bring on the table, we'll be not able to appreciate. We'll be like insects in front of it, okay? AI is reached only the mascuto. So we'll have two options, at, uh, either the extinction or become immortals, okay? Let us try to explore that. But before I uh, walk into it, uh, AI will provide us a decisive strategic advantage. Okay, just like nuclear bombs and the Star Wars or the, um, the IRBMs and ICBMs. And that is something which we should be working upon to give it a soft landing. And India, as an Indian, we should be party to it. Immortality on the age front, it will, uh, it will push our timelines on our age. Okay, uh, we are now 70 years of life expectancy. It can be moved up to 150 years or probably being, being more important as uh, AI moves into genetic engineering or innovation cycle. We call it runaway innovation. And we should be aware that if we are not party to it, we'll be, there'll be no catching up. Top 100 AI companies are in Northern America at this point of time. They are putting up humongous amount of money. So as Sir pointed out, let me come to the slide where what kind of jobs, because AI will first impact our jobs, okay? Uh, it will create a lot of jobs. It will create immense economic wealth, by the way, okay? But it will also take away a lot of jobs, which are, if you look at this uh, slide, the jobs where there is a no compassion is needed. A human compassion is not needed and can be optimized. Jobs where manual in nature, those jobs will be gone. Okay, AI will take over. But the jobs where creativity, strategy is needed and compassion needed, those jobs will be still available to human beings. So we should be prepared for the world where a lot of creativity is required, a lot of strategic thought processes are required, and where there is a human empathy is required, those jobs will be get created, and that is the job we should be get aligned to it uh, more and more, right? This job, gone, gone, gone. Humans will be increasingly leveraging AI all in all the jobs in coming age. So we should be at, uh, in our curriculum, in whatever we do, we need to adopt 
uh, data analytics, AI, mathematical and statistical foundation into our understanding. That is very, very imperative and AI based technologies into it. So jobs at 60K below, jobs like personal care, store clerks, retail sales, they'll be all under attack, okay, by AI. And if you look at uh, this guy, this gentleman, um, uh, his uh, uh, Putin, right? He said very clearly, whoever becomes the leader becomes the ruler of the world. R leader in AI space will become the ruler of the world. They're very clear. They are driving uh, towards to become the ruler of the world, leveraging AI. Be it in autonomous weapons, be it into exoskeletons, be it into robotics, okay? And we should be investing more time, more energy into it. US is putting $3 trillion at this point of time in AI. Companies like Google, uh, Amazon, uh, Apple, Facebook, IBM, they have all made hands. They have created a strategy. They call it AI first strategy. They are sharing the IPs. They have got a website. You can go and hit that website. That is partnership on AI. There is an emerging new world order on AI. We should be aware of it. IP, uh, in IP research or AI research, China has already surpassed United States at this point of time. Okay. The more than 97% uh, of all the deals which is happening in AI space, it is happening in Northern America. We should become party to it. We should work towards it to become party to it. And I believe that India on, is on cusp of century's biggest opportunity. We have got 3.5 million pro, uh, professionals, IT professionals itself. We have got more than 3,500 institutions. Okay. We have got humongous number of people being produced. Okay, um, resources which are coming out. Uh, if you look at, obviously, on a population graph, we have jumped up to 1.35 billion. But in GDP, we have grown up. Okay, uh, we have grown up in the sports and imports. Uh, the length of Indian roads, which tells you about the life side, uh, life uh, which is around us. Okay, the food grown production, which we have all grown up into it. So India is on the cusp of the century's biggest opportunity. We should leverage AI. Uh, that is how uh, we should be uh, looking at from the perspective from. Thank you, sir. I believe uh, I was able to uh, complete it up in right time, probably a, a minute here and there, probably. No, no, Kundana, it was indeed a wonderful overview and great insight into the future of computing, and which is in store for us. And I think that it will, come, it will be completely a different world in times to come. Uh, but the new technology certainly will bring in new challenges too. And we need to keep ourselves abreast and create a right ecosystem of learning in academic institutions. Uh, since we are uh, typically talking of uh, an audience uh, which is more of uh, aspiring students who want to pursue career in artificial intelligence. So we as academic leaders, what do you think our curricula should be like, uh, which we can call it as curricula for future uh, generation? Uh, so my, uh, my thought process on that uh, is uh, basically in uh, a few terms. Uh, one is uh, that our curriculum should include more statistical and mathematical foundations, okay? And we should be intervening uh, not only at a higher education level, but at a level itself, the school level itself, and uh, bringing more uh, foundations into it. Uh, probably uh, we should be uh, at a university level, we should be launching or institutional level, we should be launching a lot of uh, foundational courses, uh, uh, which will give an overview to students um, and the, the people who are there, or I believe a lot of school children are there here. Okay, uh, they need to learn about these AI and emerging technologies, all aspects of it, uh, to make a career choice what they want to do. Okay, uh, we should be more focused on our faculty. Uh, there is an awful lack of faculty into AI and emerging space. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. As you rightly mentioned, that uh, there would be school children and uh, the things have to start from the school level uh, in fact uh, i have a couple of questions uh, from from the children uh, they, they they're curious about uh, why do we call artificial intelligence a demo right sir uh, so should i should i respond to that yeah 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 why do we right. call this as a demon <laughs> so right so when elon musk says uh, that we are summoning the demon okay he is actually referring to artificial super intelligence, that world which is coming in. And if the kids who are there, they must have seen Terminator, the Skynet, right? There's a lot of movies, uh, the fictional movies which are there. But you know how science fiction movies works. They become a reality tomorrow. 
and and to avoid that what he's trying is trying or even bill gates when he said why can't we understand it they are trying to warn us they are trying to say that the ethical value or the good ai or bad ai okay we need to understand that quickly we need to become uh, put policies or probably technologies in place to sandbox ai okay so that it should not create a nuisance for us it should not become detrimental to human beings okay it is like this an autonomous vehicle uh, we develop this autonomous vehicle and autonomous vehicle if it goes mad and start killing humans it is a bad ai okay how can we stop it how can we bring in value system so these are only warning algorithms uh, when are when we are saying it is a demon it can be a demon okay there is a probability to be demon and we need to yeah. put that uh, into control and to a perspective that the focus these statements are making well said one one of the kids want to know uh, what is the difference between augmented reality and uh, and virtual reality so uh, virtual reality is uh, like a movie uh, it's a virtual world uh, you can take a, your phone and put a google cardboard into it and you can watch your phone in three dimensional okay and um, that is based on your uh, eye depth actually and uh, they manipulate that but that's a virtual world there is no reality into it but if in the real world you use your phone and some of the new iphones which has come in it has got a lidar in the sense the depth now uh, you on the real world you can uh, project certain things that will be an augmented reality some data sets or some information or some graphic on the real environment you are sitting on like you are sitting on a sea shore and you can put up uh, 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 some article some archi in front of you then then that's an augmented reality that's the basic difference between it but you know what the virtual reality and augmented reality world has merged and there are devices like hololens ajna lens these devices are coming in we call it mixed reality where virtual reality is also projected on the real world okay so that is also available okay and this is the mixed reality you can go on youtube and hit it on hololens and all you can learn more on mixed reality and they and they are saying by the next 4 5 years we will be living our smartphones and laptops and using this mixed reality devices uh, like apple lens or um, uh, hololens and all uh, for our daily daily life Uh, uh, Rubal, uh, I can see some hands raised here. So, will it be possible that if you can unmute uh, uh, any of them, maybe name like Archit Singla sure, is there, uh, sure. and let's see uh, if he has any question. Also, sure, we'll do it. Doing it. Sure. 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 अर्चित हेलो सर यस मी अर्चित यू हैव गॉट अ क्वेश्चन अर्चित ओके कुड यू प्लीज अनम्यूट डॉक्टर अनमोल गोयल गुड इवनिंग सर Yeah, uh, good evening honorable uh, yeah this is sir uh, mr kunnalal uh, my simple question is uh, that uh, where india stands as far as this ai is concerned in comparison with china or in comparison with uh, usa so uh, see uh, we we have started making investment if you are saying that uh, we are becoming increasingly aware about ai technology set Uh, but a recent article which i was reading probably from the technology gap the areas which they are working and we are still not working i think we are around uh, we are lagging behind by 10 years or a decade probably and obviously we need to catch up uh, quickly into this space uh, and bring in a lot of these research um, and innovations to our academia and enterprises okay uh, sir one more question is uh, for honorable vice Ch- uh, chancellor Dr. Yeah, Aroda, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, myself, Dr. Mohan Goel. I am working uh, uh, in Hyderabad as a vice principal 
Temple and Dean Academics. Some private colleges there, and uh, we are a NAC A plus institute. So it's a 20 year, uh, 20 year old institute, basically. Sir, uh, my it's a general question, basically. Sir, now see, uh, upon uh, you know uh, recommendation from MHRD or AICT, we have implemented this uh, OBE. Now we have established many, you know, advanced technology center like AI robotics there at our campus. There's a lot of, you know, activities happening everywhere. But despite all this, despite all these efforts, we're not getting, you know, good student, good stuff. So <laughs> means what is the way I know you are a, you know, well-known academician and uh, you have been a director at tech also. My native place is also Punjab. I am from Mohali. Basically. So, 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 so the, to be, uh, to be, to be quick here, uh, yeah. I would say that uh, it is the learning field which we have to give to the students. No students yeah. is good or bad. So if yeah. we are giving them a learning platform, they can figure it out. So they are very smart. They are very agile. So we should not be worried about the quality of the students. It's just a platform which we need to give to them and everything would be fine. Uh, okay. uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Goel. Uh, we can we can talk offline. <laughs> uh, otherwise, no. Actually, I uh, yeah. You know, thank I'm you very much. Please, uh, yeah, please. Uh, uh, now, uh, in fact, uh, we will be having a an exclusive webinar on automation and robotics next week or next to next week. But still, there is a question uh, from a child that what he is curious to know what is robotics. If you can throw light light on that, uh, Kundan. What sir? Can you repeat the question, sir? I was. Let me see the chat. Did they know the chat? What is robotics? Oh, the the basic question, robotics. Okay. <laughs> so 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 AI needs a humanoid form, right? So we we are also think think like this. We are an AI. We have got a brain, but to express ourselves or to interact with the environment around us, we need hands. We need eyes. Okay, and also to grasp and become part of it, we need our all devices like our hands, legs, and all. So similarly, to interact with the environment around, you need an um, an, an implementation, and uh, which is made from probably uh, iron, silicon, and plastics. And these implementations we call it robotics. But the brain is still there. Okay, so it leverages the brain like us. Okay, to do the jobs, it walks, and and you can actually go on YouTube and uh, and visit Boston Dynamics. Okay, or visit Sophia, type Sophia, or go to Boston Dynamics. You'll see these robots, which are like us, humanoids. They are walking, they are talking, uh, they are moving around. Okay, they are the robotics. They're doing a lot of things. They're carrying weight. Okay, uh, so they are, this is this implementation, we call it robotics. Uh, will it be possible to, mute, to unmute Ashima Jain if uh, she is able to... Yes, sir. Uh, please uh, ask your question. Good evening, question. sir. Yeah, Shima. Sir, I have a question that uh, if uh, AI have uh, many much more IQ than us humans, then uh, it won't be a threat to us. Uh, uh, obviously. Like uh, they would, uh, they would uh, 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 operate us human beings. Ashima, you Thank are you, right. Ashima. Uh, right, you are right. AI at this point of time in narrow intelligence world does have that. It is not sentient. It does not have an IQ. Okay, it does only a task orientation. But as it matures and when AGI and ASI will become available to us or AGI will become available to us, obviously it will have a lot of IQ than us. Uh, AGI is being projected to have IQ level of 5000. Okay, we operate, we humans have got only 90 to 140. Uh, IQ level. Einstein was 140, by the way. So the problem is uh, not between that. We have to also think through that. How do we sandbox it? And how do we interact with it? Okay. Uh, obviously, the fear factor, which is there is we call it perverse instantiation. You can give him a problem. Okay. And he can do a perverse instantiation of it. That is the fear. Okay. And we need to develop his strategies, technologies to contain that or sandbox AI to contain that so it is not detrimental to us, okay? So uh, that perverse instantiation, let me give, tell you what perverse instantiation is. Like tomorrow, the AGI is available, which is super intelligent, or ASI is available, and we go and tell him, Ki bhai, dunia se bhook bita do. okay? And the AI will think, 
एंड ही मे डिसाइड कि भाई ये भूख लगती किसको है तो एंड ही विल डिसाइड ओह ह्यूमंस को भूख लगती है तो ह्यूमंस को मिटा दो तो भूख खत्म हो जाएगा दिस इज नोन एज पवर्स इंस्टेंसिएशन ओके दिस इज अवर्स लॉजिक एंड 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 यू नो हाउ इट इज इजी टू किल दैट इज द फियर ओके that is where the fear of their intelligence is so we are we have to develop the technology and you guys are the people who will be developing the ethical uh, value systems and sandboxing and strategies yeah. to contain it so so yeah kundana rightly rightly said uh, i think yeah these are the guys who have to develop it uh, uh, the next generation guys uh, you you indeed have touched upon the kinds of jobs which will go away and a new breed of jobs roles uh, that will enter the arena uh, can you be specific on this with regard to the new generation of technologies and the technical and soft skills which will be required uh, now uh, besides knowledge in this in these areas so sir you rightly pointed out earlier only uh, that uh, a lot of empathy is required into our job okay we students need to develop a lot of strategic thinking a lot of um, um, empathy or creativity whatever they are doing because these high level jobs for humans which we are apt fit for it okay will become available the drudgery will be gone the manual jobs will be gone okay so what is fit for a human being those jobs will become available to us okay so we will be looking at what kind of jobs sir uh, uh, we will be looking more ai oriented like artificial intelligence analyst kind of a job every company will require it they need people who can look up the data the company is generating how to analyze it how to take uh, benefit out of it okay how to predict things oh, this is where they'll be looking be it crm be it enterprise applications uh, be it uh, scm application everywhere they'll be looking at it okay they'll be looking at data scientists to make sense out of that data okay so they'll be looking at 5g specialists they'll be looking at blockchain specialists so these are the jobs and the intermingling of ai and these technologies together this is where they'll be looking at more skills so right? so in fact kundan you just now uh, talked about 5g i have a question here uh, from from uh, from a participant here that 5g is more than 70 times faster than 4g people are talking about benefits of uh, seamless connectivity but no one is talking about the health hazards in terms of radiation what is what do you have to say on that so uh, sir there are uh, questions being raised i believe uh, i'm 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 actually also the part of national working group on 5g and um, ai uh, with technical uh, tec department of telecommunication and uh, this question is there uh, they are being measured uh, and obviously there is a concern because with 5g technology the current set of technology which is and uh, more of a wifi routers will be available very close to us more powerful routers so instead of cells it will come very near to our home and our uh, living spaces uh, these routers so obviously there is a concern around it but uh, uh, i am not very sure they lot of them will be unfounded um, uh, because this kind of uh, scare mongering has al- al- uh, always there into technology even in 4g world it was there before before that the transformers which get used to get installed into our uh, society and mahalla there were a lot of uh, issues around it people used to raise a lot of scare mongery so these are lot unfounded there is no ba- uh, valid uh, medical background but we need to go on exploring understand our interaction um, as this technology invade us more and more great kundana i think uh, we have already 15 minutes over and then our scheduled time uh, i think the discussions can continue to go on and on because i have many more questions uh, and raised hands also but i think uh, we need to close uh, at some point of time uh, i i know you have touched upon many many uh, new things uh, which people might not have heard about it and this is the future of computing and probably we can have another sequence uh, of this webinar on this topic because it's a very 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 important topic in today's context and uh, which in fact uh, uh, will define the future of the world so 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 i must thank uh, kundana for this but i must uh, also uh, inform the people that uh, we are in talks with the vt foundation to look into the possibility of offering some joint certification courses in the area of ai ml data analytics computer vision iot 5g blockchain and so on 
I believe that these foundation level courses will provide quite extensive input to learners, helping them decide which stream in AI and emerging technology space they would like to focus more as their career choice and go on for more intensive uh, professional uh, level courses. Uh, I would now request uh, Nandita to just uh, uh, close the session with some closing remarks. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Lal, for an absolutely incisive, uh, you know, what do you call it? The things that you brought uh, in your uh, conversation, these are these are revelations for us. And especially, of course, we would like we would have liked to know more about artificial general intelligence because I think that would be something that would impact uh, all human beings and not only people from the STEM background. So, uh, but uh, yes, we do hope to continue these series of conversations further. We really thank you for taking your time out to uh, come and address our audience. And we would also thank VC Sir for giving the for providing the platform for these kinds of discussions to take place. Thank you, Sir. And we again sincerely we uh, render our sincerest appreciation to Mr. Lal for the inputs that he has given on AI and hope to take this forward in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Sir. Thank you. And I I wish all the best to the young brigade who are looking forward to make AI as their career. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you.